these eight players are the best of the best, but only one of them can win. It's eight players, one tournament, and one grand prize of one million dollars. As we begin the Tic Tac Toe Tournament of Champions. From Hollywood, it's everybody's favorite game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's the Tic Tac Toe Tournament of Champions. And now, here's your host for Tic Tac Toe, the man who started it all, Rocky T. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, we have a great audience out here. Welcome to the Tic Tac Doe Season 1 Tournament of Champions. Glad to have you with us. We have our quarterfinals that we're going to start with, with our eight people that are in the game. I'm going to start off before we start the game with the opening of who's in the tournament. Some of the people are all on the call right now. I'm going to start with the first winner on down to the eighth winner, okay? Our first place winner with $852,240 is Aubrey Scott. Yay! Thank you, Paul. A second place winner with $529,507 and 10 wins is Gary Newkirk. Gary! Hey, how you doing, people? How you doing, Gary? I'm fine, how you doing? Good. <laughs> our third, um, a third place winner with $485,178 is Tim McClellan. Yay! And he won eight wins and two ties, and he also played the famous game against Alex O, where he won the biggest jackpot in the history of the game, $107,000. Yay! Right. Our fourth place winner, who's not on the call with us right now, he'll be playing his game on Monday, with $470,153, eight wins and one tie, Cameron Henry. Yay! Yes. Our fifth place winner with a total of $325,245 and seven wins is Alan Keith Burns. Yippee. Our sixth place winner, he's not on the call with us, with $294,518 and five wins, it's Alex Putnam. Hey. Our seventh place winner, with $279,367 and three wins, is JVD, better known as Justin Van Derzio. And in eighth place, with a total of two hundred and ten excuse me, two hundred and seventy thousand three hundred and ninety-eight dollars, four wins, and one tie is Matthew Vascasello. And those are players, our champions that's gonna be vying to try to win the million dollars in the tournament of champions. I will explain the rules of the tournament. Each of our players will play a regular game of tic-tac-toe. They'll play one match with each other. The winner of that match is going to advance to the semifinals. Of course, the loser, and y'all might find this crazy, but this is how they did it in the real show. The loser will play the Beat the Dragon game for a consolation prize. Yay! All right. So we're going to go ahead and start this tournament off. We're going to be right back after this uh, commercial break. Don't go away. All right, guys. Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe. Now, as y'all know, we're going to be doing the quarterfinals game. As you know, the winner of this quarterfinal game will be off to the semifinals. 
and um, also the loser of the game will be uh, playing the Beat the Dragon game for a nice consolation prize, okay? With that all said, Marty, tell us who our opponents are. Okay. Our first player is a target employee from Baltimore, Maryland. His previous total was three hundred twenty-five thousand two hundred forty-five dollars. It's Alan Burns, and his opponent he is a Wendy's employee from Longview, Texas. With his previous total four hundred eighty-five thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars, Timothy McClellan. Welcome, 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 guys. Glad to have you. And Tim, um. I understand, uh, what was you thinking about all day in preparing for this uh, tournament? Well, Ronnie, I was just thinking about all the games that I played uh, just to get here, including that big marathon with Alex Sewell. I'll never forget that one. He was probably, probably the greatest opponent I had. Yeah, uh, y'all, you won the highest uh, total in the main game of $107,000 this season, and uh, we congratulate you for that. All right, good luck to you in the tournament, and Alan, we will never, we'll never forget about that episode with you and Craig. <laughs> take, thirty minutes taking, long. <laughs> taking thirty minutes to finish a game, but hey, I, I watched a video where it was just as bad. In yeah, game. but uh, you know that's behind you. You did win seven in a row on the uh, at the end of the season, and I look to make it eight. I'm, when you're hot, you're hot. Let's see if I can keep it going. All right. Well, good luck to you, sir. And here Thanks, are Rod. the nine categories for this quarterfinals game, and they are 50 states, double or nothing. Now, if you choose the double or nothing category, I'll read you a question, get that box right. You can choose to risk that box for another box, but be careful. If you do risk that box, and miss the question, you'll lose both boxes, so be careful. Game shows, cartoons, famous shapes, excuse me, jumping category, mixed fruits, secret category could be about anything at all. And if you choose that category and you're correct, the value of the jackpot will double in December. And Alan, if you please, which category do you want to pick? All right, 50 states. Going 50 states. All right, and we're going to take, we're going to have the sky scream up, so here we go. All right. For 50 states. All right, take a look at this state. Do you see this state right here? Yes. All right, there were 16,067 slot machines in 1960 in this U.S. state. In 99, this U.S. state has, currently has, 205,726 slot machines. Name the state. Nevada. Good job. Good start. Let me get this off of here. All right, and we'll get your space up here. You were correct, so here we go. $2,000 in the pot and we shuffle. Thank you, Marty. And Tim, which category do you like? I'm gonna go with 50 states in the center. All right, this will be for $3,000. If you need the extra time, we will give it to you, okay? okay? I'll hit the enter button anyway. All right, take a look at these two states here. Second here. Oh, you're actually buffering on my side. Okay, you can't see. I see him still. No, I don't. You might want to uh, exit the call and rejoin. That usually helps. Hey. Yeah. From past experience. That's what I've done. Leave the oh, call. Okay. Come back in. All right. All right. Stand by. All right, go ahead, Good. exit. A rejoin call. We'll wait. We want this to be fair on both sides. Okay, Tim is back, I think. 
Alright, now can you see these two states? Uh, still buffering. If not, I'll just read you the question, okay? Okay. Okay, I'll just read you the question in fairness. All right, here's a two-part question. All right, the two-part question is this. First, this state is the nutmeg state. Name it. Is it A, Connecticut, B, Michigan, C, Indiana, or D, New Hampshire? And the second question, this state's motto is Eureka, I found it. Is it A, Oklahoma, B, California, C, Texas, or D, Montana? Do you need the extra time? Uh, no, I'm going to take a shot. Go ahead. Uh, I think the first answer would be uh, Connecticut. That's correct. And the state motto of Eureka, I got it. Would that be California? That's correct. Good job. Wow. Wait a minute, let me fix out something here. Okay, I got that. All right. You got those right? Okay, we're going to give you the box, Tim. $5,000 in the pot, and we shuffle. All right, where, which category would you like now, um, um, Alan? Let's go with game shows. Going game shows, okay. Here's your question on game shows. Mar I mean, um, Alan. Okay, name this 90, excuse me, name this 1980 Art James game show in which contestants form poker hands by a 20 card game board. card game board? Yes. And poker hands, right? Right, I'll repeat it again. Name this 1980 Art James game show in which contestants form poker hands by a 20 card game board. Um, I'm gonna have to take a guess. It's probably wrong, but Texas Hold'em, it's wrong. No, it's not Texas Hold'em. I have no idea. Uh-uh. It is, somebody wanna answer that? That's super pay cards. That's correct. It's super uh, pay no, cards. It's 81 and 82. I definitely drew a blank. Right. 81 and 82. Thank you, Marty. All right. Uh, we still have $5,000 in the pot. We shuffle. And Tim, which category do you want? I'm going to try game shows. Going to try game shows. Okay. Here's a question on game shows, the second time in that category. Here it is. What 2003 GSN game show has contestants sequestered in a warehouse for 24 hours while studying useless material for $10,000? Uh, that would be cram. And that would be right. Good job. $7,000 in the pot. We shuffle. I need a miracle. All right, Alan, which category? Mixed fruits, please. All right, mixed fruits, and I'm going to give you the chat. Look at the chat box. I'm going to type a mixed fruit on your screen. Take a look at the mixed fruit here. Okay. You see that mixed fruit? I do. All right, 92% of the fruit contains water. Name it. Watermelon. That's a good job, right? $9,000 in the pot, and we shuffle the categories. Category one, you need it. 
All right, Tim, which category? I have to go with game shows to block. All right, third time in the category. Here's your question on game shows. What NBC game show that was hosted by Cedric the Entertainer requires contestants to focus on the uh, cost and value of items for a top prize of $1 million? Oh, my Lord. Five seconds. Uh, inflation. Not inflation. I'm sorry. The answer is it's worth what? Come on, fifty states. It's 50 worth what? He and uh, Alan's rooting for that fifty states to 50 come states up. Are mixed fruit. Fifty states are mixed fruit. All right, let's see if your category comes up, Alan. We shuffle. Let's see one of the two, please. Okay, Alan. Where would you like to go to? Oh, jeez. Um, oh gosh. Ooh, um. This is really tough. You, you said the secret category can be about anything, correct? Yes. I'm going to go with it. All right, you're going with the secret category. Get the secret category. would move, but. Right. Get the secret yeah. category correct. It will double the value of the jackpot at $18,000. You will win the game, and you will advance yeah. to the semifinals, okay? And I'll give Marty a hug. Yes. Thank you. All right, and you know these, and you know the secret category is usually not an easy Anything. question. Right? Huh? You know the secret category is usually not an easy question, right? I know. All right, well, here's the question, and I will advise you right now, if you need to, get a pen and paper, because it's about math. Oh, God. I'm so here's the question. Jeez. If you were if you were to add up all of the gifts in the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, how many gifts would be given to you? Okay. Um hold on, let me find a pen real quick. Okay, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna give you a little extra time on this one because this is a difficult question. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you said all the days of Christmas? If you were to add up all of the gifts in the song, The Twelve Days of, Qu of Christmas, how many gifts would be given to you? I got, and I messed that up too, Alan. It's not 78. No, it's not 78. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Huh? It's uh, actually three. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. No, it's not 78. Um, I'm going to tell you why. It's 364. I'm going to tell you how, I got, how it got to 364. Because remember, what? on the first day of Christmas, what true love gave to me, a portrait in a pear tree. Right. And then on the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two calling birds and a partridge and a pear tree. That's three things right there on the second uh, day. Okay. And then I didn't understand that on, the, on, the, on the third day. Of, up, I figured you wanted me to add everyone up. Right. Uh, You're basically adding the triangle numbers up for this one. So the first triangle uh, number is a one. The second one is the three. The third one is a six. The fourth one is the ten. The on to seventy eight, wow. and that gives you three hundred and sixty four. So not an easy question. I'll explain it to you off camera uh, more if y'all need to. All right, let's shuffle the categories. All right, which category do you want, uh, Tim? Uh, I gotta try to block with famous shapes. Going famous shapes for the block is your question on famous shapes. This is a typical shape of a box or a die. Name it. Uh, cube. That's right. Good job. Eleven thousand dollars in the pot. We shuffle. Cube. 
Alan, which category? Oh, boy. Mixed fruits. The board is treating y'all right. Here it is. Mixed fruits. And let me go ahead and type up this mixed fruit. This is for the block, by the way. Right. Did I say for the win? No. I don't think it said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is for the block. Take a look at this mixed fruit here. You can tell why this is a tough game, guys. Folks are... The folks want to really win. Yep. Hey, you see that mixed fruit there, um, Alan? Huh? You see that mixed fruit right there? Um, yes. This fruit is a citrus, a citrus fruit. Name it. Oranges. That's correct. Good job. <sighs> All right. Let me get that off. And here we go. That's the correct answer. Oh, excuse me, wrong button. <laughs> wrong button, I hit the red button. $13,000 in the pot, we shuffle. Tim, which category? <sighs> Gonna try to block again with cartoons. Cartoons, indeed. Here's your question on cartoons. This arch enemy of Bugs Bunny Constantly injures himself while hunting for bugs. Name him. Uh, that would be Elmer Fudd. That's correct, and I think we would have accepted Wild E. Coyote, too, because he did that two in one episode. Good job. $15,000 in the pot, and depending on what category is up there, will determine the outcome of the game. Let's shuffle it. Miracle Vanna. Which category? Game shows. All right, if you get this category on game shows correct, um, Alan, we'll have our first tie game, and we'll continue. We'll do a new game with the pot at seventeen thousand dollars. Okay. I can only pray that it's. I know this. All right. Here's your question. Yep. In what game show is there a panelist of six celebrities to whom contestants? Much must match their answers. God bless it. Match game. We have a tie game. Yeah. All right. Well, you can tell these two deserve to be in the tournament champions. The jackpot is at seventeen thousand dollars. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we're gonna do another game right after this. Don't go away. our first game, tie game of the tournament, and Roger. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I did not expect the tie game to happen that quickly. Y'all, that means that, let y'all guys know that we're not crapping around. We have good players in this tournament. So, Alan and Tim pushed the jackpot to $17,000. They're going to be playing their second game in their match. Remember, the loser of the match will go home. Well, they're already at home, but they'll be out of the tournament. <laughs> And uh, y'all guys ready for the second game? Sure. Here we go. The nine categories are kids, tr Christmas trivia, jumping category, Genesis, currency, sports trivia, secret category, toys, double or nothing, and colors. It looked like those are the same three red categories we had in the last game. And um, Alan, which category would you like to start with, sir? Kids Christmas Trivia. Going to Kids Christmas Trivia is your question on Kids Christmas Trivia. What is put in the stocking of a naughty child? Coal. Good job. $19,000 in the pot, we shuffle. All right, Tim, which category do you like? Uh, I'm going to go in the center with sports trivia. Okay, it's going to be a two-part question worth $3,000. If you need the extra time, we will give it to you. Okay, currently the president and general manager of the New York Rangers in 2014 has how many Stanley Cups does um, Glenn Sather have? Currently the president and general manager of the New York Rangers in 2014 
How many Stanley Cups does Glenn Sather have? Is it A9, B7, C2, or D5? And the second question, in addition to figure skating, what sport did Elvis Stoichko compete in? Is it A, golf, B, archery, C, bobsledding, or D, karate? Do you need the extra time? Uh, no, I don't think I'll try a chance. Okay, which part do you want to answer first? Uh, first question, uh, I think he has like uh, two Stanley Cups. That's incorrect. It's actually five. Wow. And the uh, other answer, in addition to figure skating, what sport did Elvis Stoico compete in? It was karate. Ah. Karate. Okay. All right, so $19,000 still in the pot. We shuffle. Okay, Alan, which category? Um, let's try... Kids Christmas Trivia again. Second time in the category. Here's your question on Kids Christmas Trivia. In the Christmas song, Snoopy's Christmas, who fights with Red Baron? Oh, jeez. Um, Red Baron, said? Yeah, Red Baron. Charlie Brown. Not Charlie Brown. It's actually in the question. It's Snoopy himself. Oh, God. Snoopy no, himself. Don't. Okay, $19,000 still in the pot. We shuffle. All right, Tim, which category? I am going to try toys in the center. Okay, it's going to be a two-part question again. Worth $3,000. Here we go. Okay, first question is this. One of the best known toys of the 60s, which company released the etch and sketch in 1960? Is it A, Art Asylum, B, Hasbro, C, Ohio Art Company, or D, Mattel? And the second question, which of these was not one of the prototypes for the G.I. Joe? Is it A, Rocky, B, Ace, C, Skip, or D, Hudson? Do you need the extra time? Uh, yes, please. Give it to him. All right, which question do you want to tackle down first? Okay, the first one, the edge of sketch, I think was made by Ohio Art. That's correct. And the second one, which of these was not one of the prototype for the G.I. Joe? Is it A, Rocky, B, Ace, C, Skip? Or D. Hudson? Uh, this is just a guess. I'm going to say Ace. No, it's not Ace. It's actually Hudson. Ah. Hudson. Okay, we still have $19,000 in the pot. We shuffle. Okay, which category you want, Alan? Um... Let's try it again, Kids Christmas Trivia. All right, going to try Kids Christmas Trivia again. Here's your question on Kids Christmas Trivia. What kind of bird is mentioned in the song Winter Wonderland? Oh, God. I'm going to guess a turtle dove. Not a turtle dove, no. I have no idea. It would have been the blue bird, or I would have also accepted the new bird. Uh, the blue bird or the new bird. Marty, did you know that? Yes, I did. Good job. All right, let's shuffle the categories. Uh, All right, Tim, which category do you want? I'm going to try the center box again with colors. Okay, you're going to stay there. Okay, here's the question on colors. Okay, here's your two-part question. Here we go. All right, the first question is this. Litmus turns what color when dipped into an acid solution? And the second question, what is what color is saffron? Is it A, yellow, B, red, C, black, or D, brown? Do you need the extra time? Uh, no, I think I, I, think I got this one. Go ahead. Uh, 
think when Livis goes into an acid, uh, the paper turns red. That's correct. And I think saffron, I think, is yellow. You did it. Good job. All right. $22,000 in the pot. We shuffle. Okay, Alan, which uh, category? Let's try toys. Going with toys. Okay, here's your question on toys. The first toy ever to be advertised on TV, which play thing did not have a body until 1963? Is it A, Cootie, B, Mr. Potato Head, C, Trolls, or D, Robert the Robot? Could you repeat that question again? The first toy ever to be advertised on TV, which play thing did not have a body until 1963? Is it A, Cootie, B, Mr. Potato Head, C, Trolls, or D, Robert the Robot? Oh, God. Which one didn't have a head? That's right, and I'm going to give you five I'm seconds. I don't know. Wait a minute. Which one didn't have a body? That's the question. Oh, body? I'm going to go on a limb and say Trolls. No, it's not Trolls. It's Mr. Potato Head, isn't it? Right. It's Mr. Potato Head. I was just going to say it had to be Mr. Potato Head. Right. Yeah. All right, we shuffle. $22,000 still on the now. board. All right, Tim, which category? I'm going to take a shot at Kids Christmas Trivia. Okay, here we go. Kids tri Christmas Trivia, here's your question. The Grinch wakes up a little girl while he is still in Christmas. Who does he wake up? Cindy Lou Who. That's, that's correct. Good job. $24,000 in the pot, and we shuffle. Okay, which category do you want, Alan? Kids Christmas Trivia, please. For the block, here's your question on Kids Christmas Trivia. In the song, now, and you got to fill in the blank. In the song, I saw blank ships. How many ships does a singer see? Could you repeat that one more time? I didn't quite hear it. In the song, I saw blank ships. How many ships does a singer see? Oh my god. Um, one. Not one. It's actually, it's actually three. Jeez. Three. Okay, we shuffle the category. It's $24,000 in pot. Just jump in when you need it. Ooh, Tim. Oh. Oh boy. Well. I might as well go for a secret category for the win. Like deja vu again, ain't it, uh, Tim? <laughs> this time it's for the win. Yes. Yeah. Get this secret category right, Tim. You only win $48,000. You'll advance to the um, semifinals, and your winnings will go up to $533,100. Okay? Okay. Here's your question, and it's a tricky one. In the Christmas song, Here We Come Wassailing, Carol's expect to receive some wassail. What is wassail? Oh, boy. Wassail, uh, is it a type of maybe Expecting some candy? Oh boy, no, it's not candy. I'm sorry. You were so close. It's a Christmas drink. A, a Christmas drink is a hot drink with nutmeg and cinnamon. Alright, you've been saved, Alan. $24,000 still in the pot. We shuffle. Okay, Alan, your pick. I'm going to hate myself for this. Double or nothing. Go on double or nothing. Okay. Here's your question on double or nothing. How many spices makes up allspice? Huh? Allspice? Oh, 
god. Um, you said allspice. Right, allspice. A L L S P I C. I'm going to take a wild guess and say five seconds. Six. Not six. It's it's one. Oh God. One. <laughs> One, okay. We still have $24,000 in the pot. We shuffle. Your question. Crap. Your uh, question, Tim. Okay, kids. Christmas trivia to win. Okay, this is for the win. All right, get this kids Christmas trivia question correctly. It'll be tic-tac-doe, $26,000, and then your winnings will go up to five hundred and eleven thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars, if my math is correct. Here's your question. I want you to give me one of the two traditional Christmas colors for Tic Tac Doe. Oh my God. Uh, red. Tic Tac Doe, you a Yeah. Nicely done, Tim. You are a semi-finalist. Yay. We're gonna add the twenty-six thousand dollars to your score. Let me make sure I get the math correct. It's five hundred eleven thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars for you, and you are advancing to the semifinals. Congratulations! Well, Alvin, first off, we're gonna add twenty-five hundred dollars to your score for that tie game, and that gives you a total of. $327,745. But more importantly, Alan, you'll be playing the Beat the Dragon game, okay? Okay. Yeah. As for a constellation prize, okay? Alright. Well, let's get going. Here we go. That was a well played game, y'all. Yeah. Alright. Alright, beat that dragon, Alan. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the numbers coming up on the board, Alan. And in this Beat the Dragon game, now what you're going to do is I'm going to encourage you to get to $10,000, okay? Now, the object is for you to get to $10,000 or more without seeing this jerk in number five, the Dreaded Dragon. Now, if you manage to reach $10,000 or more, you'll win this prize package. Now, even if you don't get the $10,000, Alan... Uh, if you see the dragon, we'll give you $10,000 just for being in the tournament, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's see what prizes you're going for. Let me go with that. Entertainment armoire. Entertainment armoire. Trip to Valley, Colorado. Trip to Boston. A trip to Monte Carlo. A bedroom group and sleep set. And a trip to Alcapoco prize package worth $32,496. Wonderful, 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 Alan. Now, if you manage to get the tick and attack, this will be a good thing. If you manage to get the tick and attack, we'll drop a $50,000 bonus and you'll have a shot at the new car. That will be a great way to finish, okay? All right. Let's uh, cover the board up. Yeah. So we're going to encourage you to get the $10,000 this time. And Alan, which category do you want? One. See what's in number one. Right off the bat, a tick. All right, get the tack, and you're going to win a $50,000 bonus and a shot at the car. Where is the tack? Two. Let's see what's behind number two. $1,500. Okay, now you have it. I like that sound effect, Marty. All right, you have $1,500. Which number next? Three. Let's see what's in number three. Four thousand dollars. Okay, you need six thousand dollars or the tack. Which number now? Four. Going in order. Let's see what's in number four. Oh! oh but no. but he wins ten thousand dollars. Yes, he do. He wins ten thousand dollars. Let's yeah. reveal the board. Play the win queue anyway, just for the heck of it. Yeah, just do it anyway. 
And let's reveal the board. The tap was actually a number nine. So Alan, we're gonna give you another $10,000. So you're gonna finish this tournament with a total of $337,745, okay? Okay. All right, we're gonna take a commercial break and pay some bills, and when we come back, we'll have our next game. Don't go away. Now it's time for the second game of our tournament of champions, and here's Rodney. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the tournament of champions, Tim uh, McClell McClellan is advancing to the semifinals, so we'll see what happens in this second quarterfinal game. It's Marty, who is he uh, playing against? Okay, our first player with a previous total of $529,507 is currently a senior student from Buffalo, New York, Gary Newkirk. And our next player is from Hawaii. Please welcome, with a previous total uh, of $270,398, is Matthew Vasquez Salas. Those are our players, Rodney. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Marty. Good job. And uh, we're going to start with the old player. Matthew, what have you been thinking about all day in preparing with this tournament? Not a lot, you know, just just uh, thinking about what I know and what I don't know. All right. And you was uh, hanging on by thread a little bit. You you came in eighth, but you made it in. And um, are you ready to do this uh, uh, quarterfinals game? I'm ready. All right. And uh, the, the other champion... His uh up we have a, and y'all two are great friends uh, understandably so it's Gary Newkirk. Hi, my Ryan, don't you look spiffy? Thank you, thank you, Gary. Um, you have won. I, I mean, in your earlier season, you managed to beat Kyle Hershen in the earlier yeah. season. Praise the Lord. And uh, you beat him um by answering about the seventies category on Kramer versus Kramer. I did. How did it make you feel at that point? Great. Praise the Lord. <laughs> $529,507 in your run. Are you ready to do your quarterfinal game? I'm ready whenever you are and whenever, ready, whenever Matthew's ready. All right. Well, you know the winner of the game goes on to the semifinals. The loser will play against the Dragon, okay? Yep. He Here's the nine categories, and they are game show hosts, jump in category, comic books, U.S. history, NASCAR, the $10,000 question, the Zodiac, Double or Nothing, and Christmas. All right, um, Gary, which category do you want to start off with? Rodney, my man, I am in this class now, and I would, it would appreciate helping me in the further front exam that's coming up next week month. I would like to try the U.S. history. All right, U.S. history. Here's your question on the U.S. history, sir. Which U.S. president won the Nobel Peace Prize for his role as a peacemaker in the Russo-Japanese War? Is it A, Grover Cleveland, B, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, C, Jimmy Carter, or D, Theodore Roosevelt? All right, what was the question again, please? What U.S. president won the Nobel Peace Prize for his role as a peacemaker in the Russo-Japanese War? Is it A. Grover Cleveland, B. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, C. Jimmy Carter, or D. Theodore Roosevelt? Was it FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt? No, it's not FDR. It's actually Grover Cleveland. Oh, I did not wow. expect that. Yeah, Grover Cleveland. We shuffle. I would have said Jimmy Carter. Yep. I thought it would have been one of Roosevelt. Yep. All right, um, Matthew, you're go. Okay. How about we do... How about... You know what? I feel pretty... I feel pretty lucky. $10,000 question. Ooh! Bold move, okay. Wow. You know what happens. You answer this $10,000 question right, we add $10,000 to the pot. Here's your $10,000 question, Matthew. Who played the role of Natalie Cook 
in the 2000 movie Charlie's Angels. Oh my gosh. And the background background music no. cut it off, guys. Oh no, that's me. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, um... I don't worry, that's a criminal case. As far as a guess... Wow. Can you say the question one more time? Certainly. Who played the role of Natalie Cook in the 2000 movie Charlie's Angels? Gosh, I haven't seen this film. Give you five seconds. I'm going to take a guess and say... Renee Zellweger? No, not Renee Zellweger. Do anybody in the audience know? No. Nobody? Oh, this was a tricky question. It's Cameron Diaz. Uh, uh, Cameron Diaz. Okay, we shuffle the category. All right, uh, Gary, where would you like to go? I want to really give it another tap in that U.S. history. Going again with U.S. history. Okay, here's your question on U.S. history. In 2003, as part of a, of a Republican protest, France's oppression to the war on Iraq, what item was renamed in the U.S. House of Representatives cafeteria? Is it A, French fries, B, French toast, C, both were named, or D, the name was renamed? So it doesn't make sense, but uh, can I ask you for another for a repeat? In 2003, as part of a Republican protest, France's opposition to the war on Iraq, what item was renamed in the U.S. House? Re what item was renamed in the U.S. House of Representatives cafeteria? Is it A. French fries, B. French toast, C. Both were named, or D. The name was renamed. Um, for while shot in the dark, I'm gonna have to try the breakfast item, please. Which is the French toast? No, it wasn't the French toast. The French fries and the French toast were both renamed, so it was C. Both were renamed. Okay. All right, we shuffle the board. <laughs> All right, Matthew, which category? Um, I'm going to go with Christmas. All right, it's going to be a two-part question worth $3,000. If you need the extra time, we'll give it to you. Okay, here's your question on Christmas. The first question, where does the poinsettia originate from? Is it A, France? B, Greece, C, Portugal, or D, Mexico? And the second question, why is Christmas celebrated on December 25th? Is it A, no one knows for certain? B, because of the birth of Jesus? C, Christmas trees look better with snow? Or D, because of the Roman winter solstice? Do you need the extra time? Yes. Give it to him. All right, Matthew, which part do you want to answer first? Second question. All right, why is Christmas celebrated on December 25th? Is it because A, no one knows for certain, B, because of the birth of Jesus, C, Christmas trees look better with snow, or D, because of the Roman winter solstice? Anybody who doesn't get this, anybody who doesn't get this is really stupid. It's the birth of Jesus. No, it's not. What? Oh. Yeah, I thought it was that too. It's actually because of the Roman winter solstice. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah, and where and where does the poinsettia originate from? It's from Mexico. Oh, Me that's friends. All right, we shuffle again. All right, and Gary, where would you like to go to? Oh boy. I'm not doing that U.S. history again. Um, let's shake things up and go for comic books. Go on comic books. Okay, here's your question on comic books. 
What is the name of the demon that Al Simmons made a deal with to become the Hellspawn? What? What was his name? Hellrider? Hell something? Hellrider? What is the name of the demon that Al Simmons made a deal with to become the Hellspawn? The Hellrider? No, Hellspawn. Hellspawn. That's H E L L. S P A W N. Sorry, I have no answer at all. <laughs> no answer. Okay, the answer is Melbogia. Melbogia. Okay, we shuffle the categories again. All right, Matthew, which category? Game show host. All right, it's going to be a two-part question worth three thousand dollars. If you need the extra time, we will give it to you. All right, let me make sure this is the right one. Okay, here we go. All right, name the two hosts. Who's um whose mic is uh fading? I need somebody to meet their mic. Thank you. All right. Uh, Matthew, name the two hosts of Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Do you need the extra time? Yeah. Give it to him. All right. Um, name the two hosts of the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Tom Bergeron? Incorrect. No, I know it. Go ahead, Marty. It's Gene Rayburn and John Bowser Bauman. Good job, Marty. That's right. All right. All right. We shuffle the categories. Okay, Gary, which category? I'm going to go for the... Let's try Christmas. Going with Christmas. Okay, here's your question on Christmas. The mistletoe is known as the kissing plant, but what else was it used for? Is it A, curing infertility, B, it was used for animal feed, C, it was starting it was used for starting fires, or D, it was eaten as a snack? I'm going to say eaten as a snack. Incorrect. It's A, curing infertility. Uh, I thought it was some sort of myth. Yep, we shuffle the categories again. All right, Matthew, which category? Uh, comic books. Go with comic books. Okay, here's a question on comic books. In The Walking Dead, who cuts off Rick's right hand? Not the Sandman. It's the governor. The go uh, the governor. Okay, we shuffle again. Gary, you're up. I'll say the US history. Okay, it's a two part question worth three thousand dollars. You need the extra time. We will give it to you. Okay, only two future presidents signed the Declaration of Independence. I need you to name both of them. Do you need the extra time? Only two future presidents. I want to take a shot right now. Go ahead. Was it Thomas Jefferson and George Washington? Incorrect. Thomas Jefferson was right. The other one was John Adams. Oh. John Adams. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, we shuffle. All right, Matthew. Okay. How about... The Zodiac. Going with the Zodiac. Okay, here's your question on the Zodiac. I'm going to read you... Um. A symbol. You have to tell. I'm gonna read you uh, 
uh, symbol, you have to tell me what zodiac sign it is, okay? Okay. The maiden. Sagittarius? Not Sagittarius, that's incorrect. It's the Virgo. Oh, Virgo. Virgo. Okay. Alright, we shuffle the categories again. <sighs> this is gonna be a long night. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, uh, which category? Once again, I'm gotta go for that U.S. history. Going for it again. Okay, here's your question on U.S. history. Two female privates from West Virginia, Linda England and Jessica Lynch, won a guard and won a prisoner, represented more bookends of U.S. involvement in what part of the world? Is it A, Somalia, B, Kosovo, C, Iraq, or D, Haiti? Was it Somalia? Incorrect. It's Iraq. Iraq. We shuffle again. Here we go again. <laughs> Okay, Matthew, you're you're up. Um, how about NASCAR? Going with NASCAR, okay. It's gonna be a two part question, three thousand dollars. Here's your question on NASCAR. I want you to give me any of the two drivers that drives for the Richard Childress racing. Do you need the extra time? Yeah. Okay, give it to him. I'll just let you know when time's up. Okay. Name any two drivers that drive for Richard Childress Racing for the Nationwide or the Sprint Cup. Gosh, I thought it would just be about... Let's see. Um, Joe Nemechek? No, it's not Joe Nemechek. No. I'll give you all the answers. It's Austin Dillon, uh, number 27, Paul Menard, number 31, Ryan Newman, number 33, Brian Scott, part-time, number two for the Nationwide, Brian Scott, number three, Ty Dillon, number 33, Paul Menard, and Austin Dillon, and number 62, Brendan Galgan. Okay. We still uh, waiting to get a box on the board. Let's shuffle. We don't get this game in less than 30 minutes. We're all going out for drinks. Okay. All right, Gary, you're up. I'm just waiting for the board to shuffle on my end. Okay, shuffled. Um, you know what? I want to, you know, try and go for a little bit risky. Let's go for that double and nothing. Going double or nothing. Okay, here's your question on double or nothing. The Bronze Age was characterized by which metal and its alloy? Which metal? Yes, the Bronze Age was characterized by which metal and its alloy? What did you say? Iron. Incorrect. It's copper. Copper. <laughs> Alright, we shuffle again. Well, these are all night people. Excuse me for not knowing. Alright, uh, Matthew? Boy, these questions are tough. Uh, Christmas. Going with Christmas. Okay, it's going to be a two-part question worth $3,000. If you need the extra time, we'll give it to you. All right, the first question. Santa is known as a holly jolly soul, but who is his evil twin? Is it A, the Grinch, B, St. Rick, C, the Argentar, or D, Krampus? And the second question, how many Christmas tree farms are there in the U.S.? Is it A, 500,000, B, nearly 15,000, C, about 5,000, or D, over 32,000? Do you need the extra time? Yes. Give it to him. All 
All right, uh, Matthew. Santa is known as the Holly Jolly So, but who is his evil twin? Is it A, the Grinch, B, St. Rick, C, Argentar, or D, or D, Krampus? I'm gonna say St. Rick. Incorrect. You fool! <laughs> D. Krampus is the answer for that one. And the second one, how many Christmas tree farms are in the U.S.? 500,000, nearly 15,000, about 5,000, over 32,000. The answer was nearly 15,000. Okay, we shuffle again. Your guy over here is getting tired. <laughs> yep. All right, Gary, you're up. Oh, jeepers, creepers. Um, the U.S. history again. Going with the U.S. history again. Here's your question on U.S. history. Now, if you don't get this one, Gary, I'm going to kick your ass on this one. Here's the question. <laughs> Where did America's first Labor Day parade take place on September 5th, 1882? Is it, a, is it A, Boston, B, Chicago, C, New York City, or D, Philadelphia? Right, I mean, it's sort of, you know, you know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut Chicago. Oh, boy, you fool! <laughs> oh my god. It's where you live at, New York City. <laughs> oh. We shuffle. <laughs> wow. Let's do it again. All right, go ahead, Matthew. Okay. $10,000 question. Okay, go on with the $10,000 question. You know the risk involved with it? Here's the question. In, 19, in 1908, New York City passed the Sullivan Ordinance, which banned what? Slavery? Not slavery, it's women. <laughs> it's women smoking in public. Women smoking. Somebody had to speak over you, so I had to ask for a repeat. Yeah. It's women smoking in public, okay? Let's us shuffle. Wow. Gary, you're up. Oh, so the reason why Ronnie and I said Chicago because we said, Gary, I'm going to kick your ass. I thought it would be Chicago. Wow, you, I'm going to really kick your ass now because you missed your own play. <laughs> I pick a box. Comic books. Go on comic books. Here's your question on comic books. In the first issue of Alien vs. Predator, what was the name of the Predator leader? I don't know and I don't care. I'm giving up. Okay, it's broken. Tusk. Are you giving up the game you're saying? No, I'm giving up that question. All right, it's broken. Tusk. Uh, I was about to say, because if you forfeit, I was going to give it to Matthew. All right, let's shuffle. This is turning into a crank game all over again. Yes. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, Matthew, you're up. And, and our responses team for trying. <laughs> yeah, they are. Game show hosts. Game shows. Okay, here's the question on game shows. All right, I'm going to give you the name of the game show. You have to tell me who hosted that game show. Lingo, back in 1987 through 1988. I know this is wrong, but I'm going to say Chuck Woolery anyway. Not Chuck Woolery. Nope. It's actually Michael Reagan. Uh, My, I never saw that version. Yeah, Michael Reagan. We shuffle. <laughs> Gary, you're up. Let's try the 10G question. Going for the $10,000 question? Uh, here's your question on $10,000. Okay, for $10,000. Karen, Carolyn Jones was best known for a role as what 1960s sitcom character? If I say this, I'm gonna be, I know I'm gonna be wrong. I was thinking somewhere the Brady Bunch of Florence Henderson. What was her name again? Her name? The girl played as the Brady Bunch. You, well, I'm gonna tell you you're wrong already. Yep. Uh, you know, Marty? 
Um, I think one of the girls was Florence Henderson, but I'm not sure about the other one. Well, actually, Carolyn Jones was best known for a role as what 1960 sitcom character? She was more Tisha Adams from the Adams Family. Mm. Uh, all right, mm. we shuffle it again. We're going to be here all night, people, so sit back. No, we're not. They're going to eventually get it. All right, uh, Matthew, you're up. Oh, well, let's hope I can get some. Let's hope one of us can get something started. I'm just gonna go with Christmas for the heck of it. Going for Christmas. Here's your question on Christmas. Saint Saint Nick was a real person, but where was he really from? Was it A. Canada, B. Turkey, C. England, or D. The North Pole? Say the North Pole. No, incorrect. It, it's, yeah. actu it's actually B, Turkey. Turkey. Oh. We shuffle the categories again. Okay, Gary, you're up. Uh, let's try Christmas. Going with Christmas. I'm running out of questions here. Here's the question on Christmas. Which of these is not one of Sanders' reindeer? Is it A, Olive, B, Prancer, C, Vixen, or D, Dancer? At least I know this one, it's Olive. Praise the Lord! You're right! Yeah. Wow. Right, that deserves five bells. Okay, somebody's on the board. Two thousand dollars in the pot. We shuffle. All right, now we're rolling. Okay, Matthew, you're up. I'm going to go with the $10,000 question. Going with that again. Here's the question on the $10,000 question. Which U.S. president was born in Milton, Massachusetts? Uh, George Bush. Which one? George Walker Bush. You said George Herbert Walker Bush? That's correct. Good job. We had $10,000 in the pot. Now we're rolling $12,000 in the pot. We shuffle. All right, Gary, you're up. Christmas again. It's going to be, let me see if I even have any more Christmas questions. Okay, this is the last two questions in this category. And then if we go with that category again, I'm going to use an alternate category, okay? All right, here's the uh, two-part question for Christmas. Of the following, what is considered to be good luck on Christmas morning? Is it A, finding a spider web, B, no coal in the stockings, C, the cookies and milk are gone, or D, a letter for, from Santa? And the second question. Of the following activities, what is considered to be a Christmas tradition? A, reading a Christmas book, B, watching a Christmas movie, or C, kissing under the mistletoe? Do you need the extra time? Well, I need one thing. The second one sounds pretty good, all of them, but uh, I'll take a shot right now at the second one. That's all right. Go ahead. For the second one, for good luck charm, what was the second good luck charm tradition? Um... I want to try the watching a Christmas film. Incorrect. Yeah, of the following activities, which is considered to be a Christmas tradition, the answer is C, kissing under the mistletoe. Yeah, mistletoe. And the other question, of the following, what is considered to be good luck on Christmas morning is A, finding a spider web. Okay, we're out of the Christmas category. We shuffle. <laughs> And where would you like to go, um, um, Matt? I'll take the Zodiac. Going with the Zodiac, okay. It's going to be a two-part question worth $3,000. Need the extra time, we'll give it to you. Okay, I'm going to read you two uh, signs of the Zodiac. You have to tell me what signs they're related to. First, the lion... And the second question, the goat. Do you need the extra time? Yes. Give it to him.
All right. Give me the zodiac sign for the lion. Uh. Would that be us? Uh, oh, shoot. Oh. Five seconds. Leo? That's correct. And for the uh, center box, give me the uh, zodiac sign for the goat. Goat. The goat, you said? Yes, the goat. Um... Five seconds, excuse me. Aries? <laughs> Incorrect. It's not Aries. It's Capricorn. Capricorn. Okay, we shuffle the categories again. Okay, Gary, which category? Oh, boy. Well, I give that double or nothing a shot. Okay, you're going for double or nothing. Here's your question on double or nothing. What is a dried plum? A prune? That's correct. Now, Gary, you can uh, go ahead and risk that um, uh, box if you want to, or you can keep it. If you want to, uh, now if you risk it, you'll, um, if you miss on the next category, you know you'll lose both boxes. What do you want to do? want to, you know, go a little strategy right now. Actually, no, I want to try to jump it. You're going for the jump in category. That's risky, okay. He's going to play, and he's going for the jump in category, which means uh, I'm gonna need y'all to get y'all dial pads out. It's a, a big risk for you, uh, Gary. Now, if you get the uh, box, Gary, you'll have both boxes, okay? But um, Matthew, if you get it, You'll get that box automatically, and Gary will lose that other box from the the uh, double or nothing category. Okay. Okay. And if you miss, and if either one misses the question on the buzzing, the other gets the box automatically. Okay. Okay. Here's the question: Which of the seven dwarfs comes first alphabetically? Matthew's going to take a shot. Without the uh, bashful. You got the box, Matthew. Good job. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to buzz you in, Matthew. Good and you job. got it it's correct. Game's not over, though. So it's $14,000. Gary, you lost the box. And we shuffle the categories here. All right. Um, where would you like to go, um, Matthew? How about... Double or nothing again. Oh. Okay, going for double or nothing. Here's your question on double or nothing. How many equal sides are there on a scaling triangle? Two? No, not two. It's none because... Um, on a scaling triangle, all the sides are not equal. Oh, I thought isosceles was all was non equal. No, I don't think well, actually, I thought now isosceles actually they are equal. Isosceles has two sides that are equal. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there are two sides that are equal. Okay, we shuffle the categories again. Okay, Gary, you're up. Gary had to go to the bathroom. Okay, guys. Well, we're going to take... He should have said something. Did he say something? He did. He put it in the chat box. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll hopefully finish this game. We'll be right back after this. All right, guys. We're back after the commercial break, and um, Gary, is your question, your uh, category. We shuffled it already. Okay. I want to try the Christmas. Okay, now I'm going to use the alternative question because you won't get a Christmas question. It's going to be alternative, okay? Here's the question. Which U.S. state is directly south of Georgia? South of Georgia? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, my 
many run through the mind. You know, I'm going to be wrong, but can I say Texas? Okay, Texas is right next to Georgia, going west. It's actually uh, Florida. Florida. I was going to say that it had to be Florida. Yes. Okay, we're going to shuffle the categories again. All right, uh, Matthew, you're up. Let's do double or nothing. Going double or nothing. Okay, here's your question on the double or nothing. Which cartoon mouse is the fastest in all of Mexico? Speedy Gonzalez. That's correct. Now you have a decision to make. You can either take um, that box and keep it, or you can risk it for another box knowing that if you mess up, in that box, you uh, lose both boxes. I'm not gonna take a chance. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna hold it here. Okay. Gonna so he's gonna, gonna stop. Sixteen thousand dollars is in the pot, and we shuffle. All right, Gary, where would you like to go? Um, let's go for the alternative. It's a block in the Christmas for the blocks. Okay, you're going for Christmas. We'll go for the alternative. Here's your question. Which is the second largest U.S. state in surface area? The second largest U.S. state? Yes. Three of them running through my mind right now. Give me just one. The second, would it be the New York state? Incorrect. You know the one, the answer you said before that? It was Texas. Now it's time for Texas. All right, we shuffle. Okay, Matthew, which category do you want? Oh, wow. I'm going to take game show hosts. All right, for the win. If you're right on game show hosts, Matthew, you'll have tic-tac-toe, $18,000 in your winnings. We'll go up to $288,398, and then you'll be advancing to the semifinals, okay? Okay. Here's, and I'm going to read you a list of the game shows. You have to tell me which game shows are they associated with. Time Machine, okay. 1985. Hollywood Squares, 1986 through 1989. And the $100,000 Pyramid, 1990 through 1991. Who hosts all these shows? And it's all one host? Yes, one host. Uh, Dick Clark. Incorrect. Oh. oh. It's, it's John Davidson. Right, it's John Davidson. Wow, Gary is saved. We shuffle the categories. Son of a gun. All right, Gary, which category do you want? Ten grand question. All right, wow. this will bring the pot to $26,000. Here's the 10 grand question. What name was given to Euro Disney? Euro Disney? Euro Disney, that's E-U-R-O-D-I-S-N-E-Y. Walt. Walt Disney? Incorrect. Oh, it's Disneyland Paris. Marty, I think you should have been in the tournament. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we shuffle. Wait, let's do it again. All right, Matthew, which category do you want? The Zodiac. All right, Matthew, same situation. If you write on the Zodiac, Matthew, it'll be tic-tac-toe, $18,000. You'll advance to the semifinals. Your winnings will go up to $288,398. Here's the question. I'm going to give you the sign. You have to tell me what sign is associated with. Okay. The crab. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. Five seconds. Sagittarius? No, nope, not Sagittarius. Anybody else know in the audience? No. Nobody Not knows. Gemini? Not Gemini. That's the twins. The crab is Cancer. 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 Uh, All right, we shuffle dang. again. This is going to be exciting. 
Oh boy, Gary, where would you like to go now? The third time in a row, the dang grand question. Alright, this will bring the pot to $26,000. Here's the question. In 1620, the Pilgrims established the Plymouth Colony in what present U.S. state? What present U.S. state? Yeah, let me read it again. In 1620, the Pilgrims established the Plymouth Colony in what present day U.S. state? Pennsylvania? Not, not Pennsylvania. It's Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Ah. Massachusetts. Okay, we shuffle the categories again. All right, which category? Um. I'm gonna have to try U.S. history. Okay, you know the situation. We'll just read the question. Here we go. All right. For uh, Tic Tac Doe and $18,000. Which important American city did British force, forces evacuate during the Revolutionary War on March 17, 1776? Is it A, New York, B, Boston, C, Williamsburg, or D, Pennsylvania? The only one that's really kicking me is Boston, so I'm going to go with Boston. Praise the Lord, Tic Tac Doe! Yeah, God, finally someone won the game. It's about freaking time. Yeah, it took a long time, but we got there. $18,000 on your side of the board, Matthew. You advanced to the semifinals, and you'll bring your winnings up to $288,398, and we will do um the Dragon Game with Gary shortly. Well, Gary, we're going to have you play the Dragon Game for a consolation prize. You ready to go? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the Dragon Game. Yeah. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. The Dragon Game did all, almost did not start. <laughs> all right. All right, Gary. So as you know, you want to reach $10,000 or more without seeing the jerk in number five. If you can reach $10,000 or more, we have these prizes for you. Okay, we have a dining room group. Two of our more bikes to the Alcapulco, a spa, a floor clock, and a trip to Portugal, all worth twenty-six thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars. Good luck. All right, all right. And if you match to get the tick and the tack, Gary, we're gonna drop a fifty-five thousand dollar bonus on top of everything, and you'll have a shot at a new car. But we want you to get the ten thousand dollars because even if you get the dragon, we'll give you a ten thousand dollar constellation prize. Okay? Yay! Sounds sweet. All right, here we go. And Gary, if you're ready, start picking. Eight. Let's see what's by number eight. Four thousand dollars. Stop it, or obviously you gotta go because you're gonna get a consolation prize anyway. What's your next number? Six. You said six. Six. Okay, number six. Oh, the tag. Get Seven. the tag, and you have the jackpot. What's your number? Seven. All right, if you get that tag, you will get a $55,000 bonus, and that will be a great way to finish the tournament. Number seven. Let me try it again. Number seven. Ooh, $5,000. Okay, last pick one way or another, Gary. Which number? Four. Let's see what's by number four. You got it, Gary. Good job. How lovely. All right, so you got eleven thousand and five hundred dollars in cash, and we're gonna see where the tack is. The tack is actually in number um one, and the dragon was in number two. So we're gonna give you thirty-eight thousand four hundred forty-nine dollars 
as a consolation prize for the tournament. Thank you. And we're going to add your previous winnings of 529,000. Let me write this down here. Let me type it up. Five, there we go, two, nine, 507. That gives you a total, Gary. Your final total is $567,956, Gary, okay? And thank okay, Yeah, thanks for being in the tournament, okay? All right. It, Do we have any more people that's on the call that's in the tournament? I'm here. You're here, but we don't have JVD. Finally, we can, we can add him. Oh, is JVD available? I don't know. Let me ask him. Let me see. I'll ask him. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. I think I still got enough battery on my camera to do another game. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll try to do a third game if he's available. Don't go away. It's now time for our third game with Rodney. Thank you, guys, and welcome back. Well, we're done with that long game, but we have our third quarterfinals game that we're going to do. And Marty, announce our next set of quarterfinalists. We'll do. Our next set of quarterfinalists, he's a big WWE fan from Florida, Alex Putnam, with a previous total of $294,518. And he's also a big wrestling fan from Pennsylvania, Previous total two hundred seventy nine thousand three hundred sixty seven dollars. It's J. Ben Diesel. Those are your three quarter finals. All right, thank you, uh, Marty. Welcome, JVD. I think you got it wrong. Uh, I, I count me and Alex as only two people. Like, right. Count me as a fat guy I count the quarter finals. That's what I mean to say. <laughs> yep. Well, um, JVD, um. Uh, how do you feel about this tournament? I'm just going to see whatever happens. I mean, if I win, I win. If not, oh well, that's what happens. All right. Well, good luck to you. And Alex Putnam, you have $294,518. Any final words before we start this match? I hope I get more. All right. Good luck to you. All right. Let's reveal the nine categories in this game. They are... Wait a minute. Let me cancel that. Hold on. Okay, they are. All right, recipes, double or nothing, December, the Gospels, video games, the jump in category, WWE as I promised, opponent's <laughs> choice, and spelling. All right, Alex Putnam, you're in the X slot. Which category do you want to go to? Well, JVD, I trust you. Let's go with the opponent's choice. I'll go on with the opponent's choice right off the bat. Just Interesting. Okay. Well, JVD, you get to pick um, Alex Putnam's category, okay? <laughs> I'll take animal audio genitalia clues for 200. <laughs> well, you know what? Strangely enough, that's one of the categories. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's going to be a blooper. Are you serious? Yeah. That's a Anyway, Actually, the categories are cartoons or animals. <laughs> animals. You want him to answer a question on animals, okay? Yes. Here's your question, um, 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 Alex, on animals. Okay. What relative of the raccoon is sometimes known as the cut bear or the cat bear? Cat bear? Yes. The skunk? Not the skunk, no. It's actually the panda. Well, when you said cut bear, it was like... Oh, I made a mistake. I said geez, cat bear. That's skunk. And then he's a, and he's a cat bear right after. Yeah, I corrected oh, myself. No, no, no. It's a panda. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right, we shuffled the categories. Wait, a panda's related to a raccoon? Didn't know that. Yep. All right, JVD, you're up. Double or nothing. Going right away. I not surprised with that. Here oh, we you should, you yeah. shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question on double or nothing, JVD. What did Rumpo Stillskin spin into gold? That would be uh hey. I'll accept that or straw, that's right. Alright. I'm risking it. 
Okay, he's going for it. Which one? For the upper corner, the WWE. All right. Uh, Get the, you know, the uh, 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 risk in this. If you're right with the WWE, $4,000 will be added into the pot. And um, you'll have two boxes of circles. If not, you'll lose them both. Here's the question. <laughs> to whom did the Honky Tonk Man lose his Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam 1988 in only 31 seconds? Is it A, Hulk Hogan? B, the Ultimate Warrior? C, Macho Man? Or D, Brutus, the Barber Beefcake? Well, I guess I'm gonna say Ultimate Warrior. Good guess, and you're right! He got it. Wow, right off, $4,000 in the pot with that aggressive move. We shuffle. Okay. Ooh, look at what happens here. I'll be damned. What do you want to do, partner? Wow. Double or nothing for the block. Turns about as fair as play. Here's a double or nothing okay. question. Uh, yeah, a lot in background noise. Here's the question. What country lies directly north of Detroit? Canada. That's correct. What's your decision? Do you want to uh, stop and take that box or do you want to risk it and play? I'll risk it and I'll go with spelling. All right. You can get both boxes if you're right. Let me put that on the board. Okay. You're going to play and spelling. There you go. Okay. Here's your question to get both boxes or lose them both. Okay. Christmas is my favorite holiday. For both boxes, spell the word holiday. H O L I D A Y. You got both boxes, partner. Good job. $8,000 in the pot, we shuffle. Yeah. Every day I'm shuffling. Ooh, oh, Ooh. now what you want to do, um, JVD? I guess I'm going to have to try to take the, uh, the block there, opponent's choice. Okay, opponent's choice. All right, you get to do, y'all playing fair play on each other, aren't y'all? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, all right, uh, hit, you get to choose a category for him, um, Putnam. Revenge. Yes. Do you want him to answer a question on U.S. states or animals? Well, since he gave me animals, might as well give him one, too. Give him animals? Okay. Here's your question on animals, JVD. What is a wallaby? A wallaby? Yeah, a wallaby. W-A-L-L-A-B-Y. I'm trying to think here, a wallaby. Well, it's like a kangaroo, so if it's the same thing as like that. You just said it. Say it. Uh, Say the answer. A kangaroo. That's right. Good job. It's also a marsupial like a kangaroo. It is. Yes, yeah, it's a kangaroo. You got it. $10,000 in the pot. Good match going with y'all, too. Let's shuffle the categories. Okay, Putnam, which category? WWE. For the block, it's going to be a two-part question worth three thousand dollars, and if you need the extra time, we will give it to you. Get a two-part question. I should have written more two-part questions, but it's that's a pretty, okay. It's a pretty good game for everything you know that's been through. That's yes. All right. Here's your question. All right. The first question, Putnam. Who did? Who did Hulk Hogan win his only WWE Tag Team Championship with? Is it A, Macho Man, B, Brutus Beefcake, C, The Ultimate Warrior, or D, Edge? There's a lot of background noise. Thanks. Okay, can you hear me, Putnam? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Who did Hulk Hogan win his only WWE Tag Team Championship with? Is it A, Macho Man? B, Brutus Beefcake, C, The Ultimate Warrior, or D, Edge? And the second question. The only match The Undertaker has won via disqualification at WrestleMania was against which opponent? Was it A, Psycho Sid, B, Giant Gonzalez, 
the junkyard dark or junkyard dog or the big boss man do you need the extra time no i do not go ahead and answer them i'll answer the first one first question that would be edge yes and what about the second one second one would be giant gonzalez you got the block good job Okay, 13, ooh, interesting board now. Oh, man. $13,000 in the pot, we shuffle. Where would you like to go to oh, now, JVD? Oh, man. Is he, is he, I'm, I'm giving, when the hell did he win with uh, Edge? When did he win the title again with Edge? It was in, it was 2002, on the 4th of July, they beat Billy and Chuck. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, the queer team. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take recipes for the block. Going with recipes for the block? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Here's your question on recipes, JVD. What is the best way to help oil-based salad dressings to adhere to greens, okay? Here's the choices. Is the A, use only expensive lettuce? B, salt salad before tossing? C, make sure greens are completely dry before applying dressing? Or D, add a drop of super glue to the dressing. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is the greatest answer. The, the last was the funniest and greatest answer I think we've ever had. <laughs> oh, that is funny as hell. Hmm. Put super glue on your food, next time, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> this being taught to you, ladies and gentlemen, by your friends at Tic Tac Doe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna ask for five seconds, JVD. Oh, real quick, real quick, can you repeat the uh, the the options again? Oh, yes. Sorry, so. A. Use only expensive lettuce. B. Salt salad before tossing. C. Make sure greens are completely dry before applying dressing. Or D. Add a drop of super glue to the dressing. I think it's make sure they're completely dry. That's correct. Good job. That last one was fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. It, it, it was completely ridiculous. Yeah. All right. All right. Fifteen thousand dollars in the pot. We shuffle. Oh man. This is dual implication. It looks like. Someone's gonna win it right here. All right. Where would you like to go, Alex Putnam? Opponent's choice for the block and win. Yes. Yeah. You can tell. You. All right, Putnam. If you you answer this question correctly, it'll be tic tac toe. Seventeen thousand dollars, and you're going on to the semifinals, and we're gonna, and your total will be three hundred and eleven thousand five hundred eighteen dollars. Okay, and JVD, you get to choose the category for him. Do you want him to answer a question on fairy tales or history? Uh, subject that I find weak. History. Okay, this is for Tic Tac Doe Putnam. Okay. How many years did the Great Plague of M Milan last? Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, Two? You got tic tac doe, that's right! Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, 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 Putnam. That was a good game. No misses along the way there. So you have won $17,000. You're going to the semifinals. We add your winnings up here. That brings your winnings to, you have $311,518. And you'll be in the semifinals. JVD, we're going to have you play for your consolation prize right here. You're going to go ahead and face against the dragon. Okay, are you ready? Sure. All right, here we go. Let's go to the dragon. The last game of the night, that game went quicker. And better. Yes. <laughs> You'll see why. You'll see it once it get on YouTube, right. Yeah. Put the numbers on the board. You played a great game, JVD. No misses there. No, I don't think so. I mean, I just got beat by a better opponent. Yes. Um, JVD... Let's go ahead and see the dragon right quick. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Ah, little bastard. <laughs> and let's go ahead and see what you're playing for. The dining group and dinnerware, 
the 14.6 day sailor, the dining group and dinnerware, the trip to Cancun and Paris, the range fridge, dishwasher and maid service, the trip to Venice, the prize is totaling $33,317, JVD. Thank you, Rodney. So wait, so wait, I'm playing for two things of dinnerware. Two dinnerware sets. Two dinnerware sets. You can sell one of them. Set. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I'll put one of them on eBay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here's the fun part, JVD. Get the tick and the tag. We're going to drop a $60,000 bonus on your total, and you're going to have a shot at a new car. Not bad for a consolation prize, right? Mm-mm, definitely. Okay, let's cover that board up. And if you're ready, JVD, and oh, by the way, if you find a dragon, we're going to give you a $10,000 consolation prize, okay? Right. So, go ahead. I'll start with the bottom corner, seven. Let's see what's behind number seven. Good start, $5,000. Stop or go. Why did, that, why did that sound like Scrabble? Oh, because uh, he has his own sound effect going. Uh-huh. Thanks. I was hoping I would not have to hear Scrabble. I already played that, but I hear it at the, at the car store. I want to continue on. Okay. And we're going to go right next door number eight. Let's see what's behind number eight. A thousand dollars. You're up to six thousand dollars. Get four thousand dollars. You have that I'm not, price package. I'm not, stop, I'm not stopping now. Top corner is three. Obviously, I'm not gonna let you stop either. Anyway, <laughs> number three. Ooh, three thousand dollars. You got nine thousand dollars. Go ahead and pick another one. Uh, I don't even get a chance to stop. Damn it. <laughs> well, actually, because you know the consolation prize is ten thousand dollars if you lose. So. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Five. Number five. Let's see what's behind. Number five. Ooh, a tick. I was, I was looking for one of those. All right. You know it's your last uh, pick. Um, Get the tack. We give you $60,000 bonus on top of everything. $1,000 will get you just the prize package. The dragon will get me a bite in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. What do you guys think? Audience. Number nine. Number nine. You think so, Alex? Number nine. I want to try the number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Okay. Number nine. He needs a thousand dollars, but he would like to see the tag. Let's see it. I like to see. All right, you got the prize package. Good job. I thought I saw the dragon too. That's why I was, you know. Yep. You went with number nine, right? Mm -hmm. You went with number nine. I was correct, right? Yeah, it was good. Right. $13,000 plus the prize package. Let's see where that tack is. Wow, it was up at number two, and the dragon was in number six. Okay, you're going home with $46,317, JVD. Not bad. We add your, your previous winnings from your, um, from your um, main games. Let me fix this. I'm always screwing up. This is why Corey has to be on here. He was not available tonight, unfortunately. Okay, that brings your total to $325,684, sir. And guys, we're going to have, um, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have closing remarks. Don't go away. Okay, here I am. Okay. We have closing remarks, and they're gonna come from Rodney. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, guys, well, we had a good tournament so far. Uh, so so far we have Tim, Tim McCullin, he's advancing. Matthew Vance Casellos is advancing, and Alice Putnam. We're gonna do our final quarterfinals game on Monday, and we might do the uh, semifinal game, depending on um, who's going to show up. So Alex Putnam, Matthew, and um, Tim, if y'all three are, are available, I might need y'all on a call on Monday because we might go right into the semifinals, okay? And uh, guys, this is Rodney1279 signing off on for Tic Tac Go. We're going to do the semifinal game probably Monday. Y'all be safe, be careful, take care, everybody.
and I'll just get the music. Get the thing. Y'all can, yeah, go ahead, because we don't need the music. I'll fix that. Let me hit enter. That was terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to let that go a little bit and get the closing. There we go. Y'all can do the theme song, hum it. <laughs> I don't know. And also a consideration provided by the following. Hmm. Restaurant the San Francisco treats. Turbo Wax to keep your car looking nice and shiny. And off your ass production. Off <laughs> of your ass every once in a while. Don't forget about Mortal Kombat! <laughs> <laughs> Fatality. Toasty! Oh god. You should save the Toasty for quiz news, which is later on in the season. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Oh god, this is JVD speaking for Tic-Tac-Doe in RCD production. God knows we're going to hell. It's only a matter of time. No, I don't want to go to hell. I'm trying to go to heaven. <laughs> so do I, but... Yeah. Alright, we're clear. 